Dear students, now we are going to discuss RC phase shift oscillator and its derivation in detail. RC phase shift oscillator is a fixed type low frequency oscillator. It consists of an amplifier circuit and feedback circuit which consists of only the resistors and capacitors. Okay, so this is the RC phase shift feedback network. It consists of three RC sections in cascade connection, each producing 60 degree phase shift. Then we can get the total phase shift as 180 degree, which is required for oscillations due to the feedback network in the oscillator. So in this side, we can give the input voltage. So each section produces 60 degree phase shift. At the end, we can get 180 degree phase shifted output signal. Do you all understand this? Here the resistors and capacitors are arranged in ladder fashion. So it is also called as ladder feedback network. Okay. Here all the resistor and capacitor values are same for a particular frequency. If we want to change the frequency, we have to change the resistor capacitor values simultaneously in all the sections. Okay. This is the construction of RC phase shift oscillator. It consists of an amplifier circuit and a feedback network. Amplifier circuit uses an active device such as transistor in CE configuration mode. CE means common emitter configuration mode. This configuration provides 180 degree phase shift between input and output. Here input is base, output is a collector. Emitter is common to base and collector. Okay. Then the output of the amplifier is given as input to this feedback network. Then the feedback signal is given as input to this amplifier circuit. When the VCC supply voltage is applied to the circuit, the capacitor starts charging and induces the voltage across this resistor. So the voltage across each RC circuit is exactly 60 degree out of phase. So totally 180 degree phase shift. So in this direction we can get 180 degree phase shift. That's what given here. RC phase shift oscillator consists of an amplifier circuit and phase shift feedback network. Amplifier uses an active device such as transistor in CE configuration which provides 180 degree phase shift between input and output. When VCC is applied to the circuit, the capacitor C starts charging and induces the voltage across the resistor. The voltage across each RC circuit is exactly 60 degree out of phase. Hence, the RC ladder network produces total phase shift as 180 degree between its input and output. Therefore, at the specific frequency of RC network, the total phase shift around the closed loop is 360 degree. By adjusting the values of feedback network, the A beta value is also equal to 1. So, percussion criterion for oscillation are satisfied here. Next one is small signal equivalent circuit of RC phase shift oscillator. Here, the amplifier circuit can be represented with the values the input impedance HIE, the current source at the output that is HFE IB in parallel with the RC. RC means collector resistor. Okay. The output of this amplifier is given as input to this feedback network. Feedback is nothing but three sections of RC network in cascade connection. Okay. So here R3 that is the last resistor in this feedback network. From that we can take the feedback signal which is given as input to this amplifier. This is the overall small signal equivalent circuit for this RC phase shift oscillator. Next we are going to derive frequency of oscillation. For that we can simplify this small signal equivalent circuit further by changing this current source as voltage source. That is the first step. Changing this. Current source is a voltage source. Current source is represented as Norton's theorem. Here voltage source is nothing but Thevenin's theorem. That is voltage source in series with the resistor. 
here this R3 and HIE both are in series. So we can combine this R3 and HIE as R which is equal to HIE plus R3. Then we can get the modified equivalent circuit as the voltage source HFE IB into RC in series with RC resistor. Then the feedback network. The last one is HIE plus R3. You all understand this one. So we are going to use this modified equivalent circuit to derive the frequency of oscillation. We can consider the modified equivalent circuit with three loops, loop 1, loop 2, loop 3. So here I1 is the loop 1 current, loop 2 current, loop 3 current. We are going to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to the loops 1, 2 and 3. Okay, for further simplification. For the first loop, we can apply KVL. Here the I1 is flowing from positive to negative. We can say the voltage value as minus HFE IB into RC. Then here for this RC, the voltage drop across this RC is minus I1 into RC. For this capacitance, we can take the voltage drop as minus I1 divided by J omega C. Correct? For the capacitance, we can take the reactance value like this. So, minus I1 divided by J omega C. For this resistor, two currents are flowing in opposite directions each other. Here, I1 is in this direction. I2 is just opposite to this I1. So, we can consider this I1 like this minus I1 into R. Here, I2 is opposite to this I1. So, we can use plus sign. So, plus I2 into R. That is equal to 0. Do you all understand this? So, it is very important applying KVL to each loop. So, after that, we can further simplify this. So, maximum minus signs are present in this one. So, we can simply multiply minus on both the sides. In this right hand side, it is simply 0. So, we can simply multiply minus inside this. We can get HFE IB RC plus I1 RC. Here, it is plus I1 J omega C. This one is plus I1 into R. So, minus I2 into R is equal to 0. So, next we can take this value as such. I1 is a common for these three terms. We can take it outside. Then the remaining terms are R plus RC plus 1 by J omega C minus I2 into R. That is equal to 0. As we all know that the IB value is nothing but I3. Here you can see this one. So, whatever current in the last resistor that is given to this input side, correct? So, here IB is nothing but I3. Do you all understand this concept? So, here we can simply substitute IB is equal to what? I3. So, this IB is replaced with the value I3. So, now we can rearrange the terms like this. First I1, second I2, third I3. So, here I1 into R plus RC plus 1 by J omega C minus I2 into R plus I3. IB becomes I3 HFE RC is equal to 0. Consider this as the first equation. Do you all understand this one? Similarly, we can apply KVL to the second loop. Okay. So, for that we can consider the second loop. Here it is I2 is the loop current. We can start with this capacitor that means minus I2 divided by J omega C. For this resistance, there are two currents which are flowing in opposite direction. So, we can take the value as minus I2 into R. This side it is plus, correct? It is opposite to this I2. So, we can say plus I3 into R. Next, this resistance which is common for this I1 and I2 both are in opposite direction. We can take this loop current from plus to negative. So, we can say minus I2R plus I1R. Do you all understand these three components? The same can be applied over here like this. So, this is the equation minus I2 by J omega C minus I2R plus I3R minus I2R plus I1R that is equal to 0. Okay, the same way. Here we can simply multiply minus on both the sides. Here it is 0. So we can leave it as such. So if I am going to multiply minus means I can get this term becomes plus I2 by J omega C. Here it is plus 2 I2 R because there are 2 I2 R values. 
so we can say minus 2 into i to r correct so this term becomes plus 2 into i to r then we can have the value minus i3 r because we are multiplying minus inside this right so minus i3 r this term becomes minus i1 into r next we can rearrange the terms okay so here i1 term is what minus i1 r then i2 here i2 is common correct so we can take it outside i2 into 2r plus 1 by j omega c minus i3 r is equal to 0 this is the second equation okay then the last one we are going to apply kvl to the third loop so here we are applying kvl to this third loop we can get the value as minus i3 divided by j omega c for this resistor its value is minus i3 into r for this resistor, it is having the values I3 as well as I2, both are in opposite direction. So, here I3 is the loop current. So, it is from plus to minus, we can say minus I3 R. This I2 is opposite to this I3, we can get plus I2 into R. That is equal to 0. Do you all understand this one? So, next we can consider this value. And here it is minus I3 R, minus I3 R, we can get minus 2 I3 R. Okay. For our simplification, we are multiplying minus with this equation. So, we can get this minus becomes plus I3 J omega C. Here it is minus becomes plus 2 I3 R. This plus becomes minus I2 into R that is equal to 0. So, here no I1 term. We can take I2 first that is minus I2 R plus I3 is common. For this two terms, we can take it outside. So, I3 into 2R plus 1 by J omega C is equal to 0. So, this is the third equation. Now, we have obtained three equations with the terms I1, I2 and I3. So, next we are going to derive the general solution of the RC phase shift oscillator. It can be obtained by using the determinant form of the above equations. So, we can take the determinant of the three equations, one, we can take the I1 values in the first column, I2 values in the second column, I3 values in the third column. So, here it is R plus RC plus 1 by J omega C. That is the I1 in the first equation. Minus R is the value of I2. HFE RC is the value of I3 in the first equation. The same way we can write the second equation like this. Minus R, 2R plus 1 by J omega C minus r for the third equation there is no i1 term we can simply put 0 minus r 2r plus 1 by j omega c that is equal to 0 so we are going to take the determinant for this values to get the general equation of rc phase shift oscillator as you all know that the matrix determinant one we can keep this first term like this so r plus rc plus 1 by j omega c then we can multiply these two values that is 2r plus 1 by j omega c into 2r plus 1 by j omega c minus the multiplication of these two values. So here minus r into minus r is plus r squared. We can put minus as this value. Correct? Then we can consider the second column first value that is minus of minus r. Okay, whenever we are considering the second column we can put simply minus, right? So, minus of minus r in that column we can consider these two columns. So, minus r into 2r plus 1 by j omega c minus this value. This is nothing but 0. Then we can take the third column first value as plus hfe rc multiplied with these two values that is r squared. Minus r into minus r, r squared. Here it is 0. That is equal to 0. Do you all understand this matrix determinant value? Okay. Next we are going to simplify all the terms. So we can write this value as such. R plus RC plus 1 by J omega C. Here it is in the form of A plus B into A plus B. A plus B the whole squared. So what is the value? A squared. A is 2R. So 4R squared plus 2AB. 2AB means 2 into 2. 4R divided by J omega C plus b squared what is the value of b here 1 by j squared omega squared c squared minus this r squared okay so next we can multiply this values here it is 3 minus sign so minus into minus into minus minus r into r r squared then we can write the value as 2r plus 1 by j omega c plus 
this value we can directly multiply r squared hfe rc is equal to 0 do you all understand this one in this one 4 r squared minus r squared so this term becomes 3 r squared correct 4 minus 1 3 r squared and here it is 1 by j squared 1 by j squared is equal to minus right so here this term 1 by j squared omega squared c squared can be written as minus 1 by omega squared c squared okay then we can get the value as r plus rc plus 1 by j omega c into 3 r squared plus 4 r by j omega c 1 by j squared omega squared c squared becomes minus 1 by omega squared c squared the next term is minus r squared 2 r plus 1 by j omega c plus hfe rc r squared is equal to 0 okay next we are going to separate the real term and imaginary terms in this equation for that we can take r plus rc as a real term which is multiplied with this bracket the same way this 1 by j omega c can be multiplied correct here it is minus r squared into 2 r is minus 2 r cube minus r squared by j omega c and hfe rc r squared that is equal to 0 okay so next we can get the value like this here it is r plus rc the real terms are 3 r squared minus 1 by omega squared c squared then we can have this value this imaginary value right so r plus rc multiplied with this imaginary value 4 r by j omega c plus this imaginary term multiplied with real term as 1 by j omega c into 3 r squared minus 1 by omega squared c squared then we can multiply this value with this imaginary so 1 by j omega c into 4 r by j omega c means what 4 r divided by j squared omega squared c squared correct then we can take this value as such minus 2 r cube minus r squared by j omega c plus hfe rc r squared is equal to 0 do you all understand this one we are going to simply separate the real term and imaginary term in this equation okay so here we can simply multiply these two values means it is purely real term and here it is this one is the real term because 1 by j squared means this 1 by j squared becomes minus so minus 4 r divided by omega squared c squared this is the real term minus 2 r cube here it is the real term so this one is real this one is real term here it is a real term here it is a real term then we can write the imaginary term as we all know that 1 by j is equal to what minus j so here this term 1 by j can be written as minus j into this term here it is again this 1 by j can be written as minus j into this term the same way we can say this minus means this term becomes plus r squared by omega c correct plus j into this term so we can write this one as minus j r plus r c into 4 r by omega c here this term becomes minus j divided by omega c 3 r squared minus 1 by omega squared c squared then this term becomes plus j r squared by omega c is equal to 0 do you all understand this thing so it is very very important in rc phase shift oscillator then we can take this j as a common term we can write the real term as such and plus j as a common term we can write all other terms inside this so here it is the real term it is the imaginary term of the rc phase shift oscillator consider this as the fourth equation it is very very important this is the general equation of rc phase shift oscillator okay at resonant condition capacitive reactance is equal to inductive reactance then both can be cancelled each other at resonant condition that means there is no imaginary term in order to find the frequency of oscillation we can equate the imaginary part of fourth equation to zero so we can take the imaginary part of the fourth equation so we can take the j term this is the j term correct that is equal to zero we can simply multiply these terms inside this we can get minus r into 4 r by omega c is minus 4 r squared by omega c similarly minus into r c into this value we can get minus 4 r r c divided by omega c the same way we can multiply inside this so minus 1 by omega c multiplied with these two values we can get 
minus 3 r square by omega c this minus into minus plus 1 by omega cube c cube plus this term as such r square by omega c that is equal to 0. In this expression 1 by omega c is a common term we can take it outside then we can have minus 4 r square minus 4 r r c minus 3 r square plus 1 by omega square c square plus r square. So we can have the r square terms like this that is minus 4 here it is minus 3 so minus 7 plus 1. So minus 6 r square minus 4 r r c plus 1 by omega square c square. We can move this omega c to this side that is also 0. So we can have this bracket here. We can take this 1 by omega c square this side and move all other terms to the other side. So minus becomes plus. So 1 by omega squared c squared is equal to what? 6 r squared plus 4 r r c. Consider this as the fifth equation. We are going to use this fifth equation in the next derivation part. Okay. So we want to find out the frequency. If you want to find out frequency means we need to get the value of this omega. So we can take this omega to the numerator by taking the reciprocal term. So we can get omega squared c squared is equal to 1 by 6 r squared plus 4 r into r c. Then we can move the c squared this side. We can get omega squared is equal to 1 by c squared into 6 r squared plus 4 r r c. Do you all understand this up to this point? So here we can consider the k value is nothing but r c by r. R c is the collector resistance. R is the feedback component. So we can simply take this R c value as k into R. Correct? So we can replace this R c with the value k into R. We can get 4 k R square. So R square is common in this bracket. We can take it outside. Then this value of omega square is equal to 1 by c square R square into 6 plus 4 k. So next we are going to take the omega value by taking square root on both the sides. Correct? Here omega is equal to 1 by rc into square root of 6 plus 4k. This omega is nothing but 2 pi f. From this we can get the value of this f. Correct? So f is equal to what now? 1 by 2 pi rc into square root of 6 plus 4k where k is equal to rc by r. So this is the frequency of oscillation for RC phase shift oscillator. So this is very very important formula. If RC is not given what will happen means we can take this 4k as 0. Then we can get the value as f is equal to 1 by 2 pi RC into square root of 6. So this is the value of frequency of oscillation for phase shift oscillator. Do you all understand this? So next we are going to derive the condition for oscillation. Condition of oscillation represents what? Gain of the amplifier. Okay. Gain of the amplifier is nothing but HFE or A. Okay. So for that we can equate the real part of fourth equation to zero. So this is the real part of fourth equation. R plus RC into 3 R squared minus 1 by omega squared C squared minus 2 R cube plus HFE RC R minus 4 R divided by omega squared C squared is equal to 0. Then we can multiply all the terms inside this. Then we can get the expression like this. So here we can have 3 R cube. Here it is minus 2 R cube. Then we can get the value as plus R cube. 3 minus 2 is 1, right? Then we can have minus R by omega squared C squared. Here it is minus 4 R by omega squared C squared. Then we can get minus 5 r divided by omega squared c squared. Then we can write the remaining terms as such. Okay. That is equal to 0. So in the next step we are going to substitute the fifth equation that is 1 by omega squared c squared is equal to 6 r squared plus 4 r into r c in this equation. Then we can get this term as 5 r into this one minus rc into this one. Okay. Then we can get the value as r cube minus 5r into 6 r squared plus 4r into rc plus 3 r squared r minus rc into 6 r squared plus 4r rc plus hfe rc r squared is equal to 0. Then we can multiply this 5r inside this. Similarly this rc inside this bracket. Then we can simplify all the terms. We can get minus 29 r cube. So here it is 
plus 1 minus 30 we can get minus 29 r cube here it is minus 20 r squared r c similarly we can get plus 3 r squared r c here it is minus 6 r squared r c then we can get the value like this so minus 23 r squared r c plus hfe r c r squared minus 4 r r c squared then we can keep this hfe r c r squared this side and move all other terms to this right hand side because we are going to find out the value of this hfe this is the forward gain right so we can move all other terms here so minus becomes plus okay while moving this side then we can keep this hfe here and move this r c r squared this side as a denominator to all the terms we can we can simplify it like this okay so we here it is r squared r squared cancel here it is r here it is r squared here it is r c squared r c here it is r c r c then we can get the value as hfe is equal to that is the forward gain of the amplifier is equal to 29 r by r c plus 23 plus 4 r c by r correct here it is r okay so r c by r is known as k so we can replace this r c by r as k here it is r by r c so that is the reciprocal term we can write this r by r c as 1 by k so we can get the gain value as 29 by k plus 23 plus 4 k so this is the gain formula of this amplifier to get the sustained oscillation in order to get the minimum value of hfe we can simply differentiate the sixth equation with respect to k and equate to 0. So, we can get the minimum value by taking the differentiation with respect to k and equate to 0. So, we can differentiate the HFU value with respect to k and equate to 0. Then we can get the value as minus 29 by k squared plus constant value is 0. Here it is 4 that is equal to 0. Okay, from this we calculate the value of k as 2.6925. So, now we can substitute the value of this k in the sixth equation to get the minimum gain required to get the sustained oscillation. So, here HFE minimum is equal to, we have to substitute the k value as 2.6925 in the sixth equation. So, 29 by k value plus 23 plus 4 into k value we can get the answer as 44.54. So, this is the minimum gain required for oscillation in RC phase shift oscillator. Do you all understand this? So, next advantages of RC phase shift oscillator. It is fixed frequency oscillator. It is simple to design, does not require expensive components, simply the resistor and capacitors. Correct? So, next the oscillations are produced in the range of audio frequency okay the major disadvantage of rc phase shift oscillator rc phase shift oscillator is a fixed type oscillator if you want to change the frequency we have to change the resistor and capacitor values simultaneously in the three sections okay so it is practically impossible to change the values of resistor capacitor simultaneously in all sections okay so, that is the major disadvantage here. So, it is only used at fixed frequency. We cannot change the frequency. It is having very poor frequency stability. Okay.